All right, today we're gonna to be installing a Valair Quiet dual disc in this 2002 Dodge Ram. It's got an MV5600 in it. Um, these steps are gonna work whether you're doing an MV4500, 5600, or a G56 truck. Um, if you take your clutch, you open up the box on the inside of the lid, there's gonna be a QR code It'll take you directly to the website, uh, to the documents page, and you can print off or you know just look up all the specs, torque specs, installation instructions, all that stuff. In this video, we're going to go over the 12 things to check before, during, and after installation. Um, these steps, if you check them as you go along, are going to pretty much guarantee that the installation is done correctly. Um, so let's get to it. All right, once you open your clutch up, you're gonna have a clutch fork, alignment tool, you can go ahead and pull that stuff out of there. And then you're gonna have some foam here. It's anti-rust paper, prevent anything from rusting. Now, you should have a bolt kit. It's gonna have your flywheel bolts. These are extra washers for the pressure plate. Uh, once we pull this thing apart, you'll see there's lock washers on all eight of these. There's six bolts, two studs. These washers are provided just in case the other washers get messed up. The lock washers, they kind of get twisted and sprung out of shape. These washers are to replace those if you need them. Otherwise, you don't need them for anything. Got a release bearing. It's pre-greased. Let's get this thing apart. Once you get all the pressure plate bolts out and the two nuts pulled off, you're gonna go ahead and pull the pressure plate and the disc out, flip everything over so you can just reverse the order to put it back together. That way nothing gets mixed up. To note, everything's gonna be labeled. It says pressure plate side. This is the pressure plate side of the pressure plate disc. Flip it over, flip it in here. Now you're going to have to pull these shoulder bolts out. These are going to be reused, so set these aside and save them. Same with these strap bolts. These are only, this only applies to the quiet dual disc. The standard street dual disc will not have these straps. Take this out, flip it over, set it in here. Pull this out. Disc out, flip it over, and you can see here this says flywheel side, as that's the flywheel side of that disc. Now we got our flywheel, we'll get under the truck, we'll bolt this up. Alright, once you got the flywheel installed and all the bolts torqued down, it's a good idea just to spray some brake clean up on here and clean any oil residue. There is a little bit of a anti rust protecting on there. Okay, let's take a look at this transmission. We got it out, and this is kind of what I was talking about, the excess grease. See all that stuff is just gummed right up on there in this fork. It slides, but it's got a lot of resistance. And that's not really what we're looking to do. So we're gonna pull this fork completely off of here. Um, make sure you don't lose the pivot ball clip. You will need to reuse that if you don't have a new one. See, it's really stuck on there. There we go. Now on a dual disc, one of the other things we want to look at is removing the pivot ball washer. And the, the new fork actually has a sticker on here, remove washer from behind the pivot ball. It doesn't look like there's anything under there, but as you can see, there's a little bit of a gap and there is a washer behind there. That has to come out for the dual disc. Okay, we got everything cleaned up, got the pivot ball pulled out, removed the washer, put the pivot ball back in there. Well, you've got it out, inspect it. If it's got any abnormal wear, a lot of times these will wear to kind of like a point. If it's like that, you need to replace it. 
Um, look at the input shaft retainer. We got a, a couple of marks here, but you can't really feel them with your finger, so we're good. Look at the input shaft. A lot of times you'll have a wear mark where the disc was riding. If you've got a big old gouge in there, you need to replace the input shaft. Probably not something you want to hear, but you try to run a, a new clutch on that, it's going to hang up, it's going to shift like crap, it's going to be hard to get it out of gear. Do it now while you've got the thing apart. Also, look right here at the pilot bearing. Any kind of grooves. You can see marks, but you can't feel anything with your fingers. On any of our Dodge flywheels, you're going to have a heavy duty roller bearing and it's actually going to ride in a different position. So if you've got a little bit of wear, uh, you still may be okay. You'll just really have to look at it on your setup. Uh, let me get set up here and I'll show you how we're going to check these discs on the actual input shaft. Once you've got everything cleaned up, the first step on that, that sheet of 12 things to check, is actually check the disc on the input shaft. So you're just going to want to slide it on here, slide it off. See this moves very easy. If you had to jiggle it, or it's getting hung up, or you can only get it this far, you're going to have to take a look at a couple things. Check both of the discs on here. If they both slide good and free, then you're good to go. You can put all this stuff to bolt it up on the flywheel. If it doesn't slide well, or if it doesn't fit at all, depending on the application, there's an inch and a quarter and there's an inch and three eighths input shaft. If you go and put this on here and it won't go at all, you may have the wrong size disc for your input shaft. Maybe something got changed when the transmission was rebuilt, who knows what, but if it doesn't fit, there's no sense to continue because the transmission is not going to stab. You're just going to waste a whole bunch of time uh, trying to figure out what's going on when you could have checked it out right here, right now. If you're having an issue getting this to slide on the input shaft, a lot of times you've got a brand new transmission with a new input shaft. You've got sharp edges on the input shaft. There's sharp edges on the hub. You can run a file through there, clean all that stuff up, and it'll slide just like it should. This is going to make the difference between a, a truck that shifts and a truck truck that shifts really well. So a few extra minutes spent here is going to make a huge difference overall. Here's something else we'll take a look at. There's a lot of questions about these bearings, thinking that the bearing is bad. These are what they call a self-aligning bearing. This inner and the outer race, this being the inner, this being the outer, will actually move independently of each other. So it'll move around. That is completely normal. Now we're going to take this and install it on this fork. There is really only one way that this goes. It's hard to put it on there backwards. I've seen it done, but there is a little ramped up area right here that the bearing is actually going to pivot on. So you're just going to get the clips on there and then you can see it can pivot as that fork moves in and out. Painted side goes on the pivot ball and you may have a different color depending on your application. We're going to take that and get our clip on here and we'll stick this up on the input shaft. There is a little bit of grease in here. There's no reason to have any more grease than that. All right, once you have all of those torqued down, you need to check this disc. This disc has to move in there freely. 
If it does not move, the clutch will not work. Do not go any further. We're good to install the rest of the clutch. All right, once you've got the pressure plate all torqued down, all the bolts in there, you should have your alignment tool should move in and out freely. If it doesn't, if you can't get it in, you can't get it out, it's hanging up, it's going to be really hard to stab the transmission. So again, a little bit of time here, making sure that that disc is centered is going to help a lot when you stab the transmission. Something else to note here is that these discs are a free travel design. So the center section is going to move freely from the actual friction material part. You can see in there, you can see that or not, but these discs do move in there. That's nothing to be worried about. That's completely normal. Okay, you can see here that that diaphragm is flat down. If yours is sticking out or anything along like that, something's wrong. Stop and check it out. There are actually measurements provided. This will be the lever or diaphragm height you can measure from the top of the cover with a straight edge from here all the way across down to right here. That measurement is going to be very dependent on which clutch you've got, but you can lay a straight edge on there, measure down to this, and compare it to the measurements in the lid of the box. If you're close, then everything's good. If you're way off, then something's wrong. Maybe a disc is in there the wrong direction. There's several things that can cause that, but don't go any further if that's not where it should be because, again, the clutch is not going to work. Okay, we're ready to stab this transmission. So uh, we're going to get all these wires and stuff out of the way and slide this transmission up in here. All right, once you get the transmission up in the general area, what I like to do is take a, I think these are probably six inch bolts, get them lined up, do it on both sides. That's gonna help guide everything in. And then you're gonna look at your gap. You got a gap at the bottom, gap at the top, and then gap side to side. If you keep that even all the way around, should just take a little bit of jiggling and everything will slide in. If you got a big gap at the top and not at the bottom, it's gonna be a pain in the butt. Like I said, use these bolts, it really helps. Okay, once you get everything slid up there, you take up your gap. Again, don't pull it in with the bolts, but once you get it up there, get a couple bolts. I like to put the, this lower one and the upper one above where I had my long guide bolt. Once you get both of those in, either side, everything's tight. We're gonna check the free travel. This is step number 10 on that sheet. Uh, free travel in the release fork. You can see the fork right there. You should be able to reach in here. You should pull it back and push it forward. Okay, on a dual disc like this, you should have inch to an inch and a half. Generally you're gonna be right there about an inch, inch and a quarter. If you're anywhere around there, you're good. If that fork does not move, or you can move it like two and a half inches. Again, something is wrong. Stop there. You're gonna to have to pull the transmission back out and figure out what is going on. Because again, it's gonna cause issues now or later on down the road, you need to address it now. We're good. So we're gonna go ahead and button all this up. Uh, get my wires, linkages, drive shafts, cross member, we'll get all that in there and I'll see you when we're ready for a test drive. Okay, we've got everything buttoned up. Uh, this truck has adjustable hydraulics on it. I've adjusted the pedal so it's just below the brake pedal right now. Uh, we'll see how the engagement is. We want the pedal about midway up when the clutch starts to engage. Um, so we'll start it up, check our engagement, and go for a test drive.
Okay, after the test drive, uh, shifts in and out of gear just like it should, nice and smooth, shifts between the gears just like it should, uh, engagement right where we like it, uh, truck's ready for a customer to come pick it up tomorrow. We'll see you next time.